Right, what's happening, people? And welcome back to episode six. I think it's episode six. We've sort of lost count, but we go with episode six of The Best of London, my weekly series with my good friend, Joel Bayer. Joel, what's happening, mate? What's happening, man? Let's make it interesting, right? Whoever can get the right number of what episode it is, we'll give you guys a little prize. How about that? Uh, Make sure you just like, share, comment, subscribe. Follow us on socials. My socials are there, Instagram and all that stuff. But yeah, let's do it, man. How are you feeling, mate? You're, uh, listen, we're both off the back of wins, respectively. I think your one was a little bit, I think your one was a little bit more impressive than our one. It's not just that. You said it as if we're like, you know what I mean? You said it as if we're, oh yeah, we're all back Wins a win, mate. Both in the top 10, both top 10 teams. I love the way you did that. I really do. Yeah, ours was, Anton said he's coming into the studio later. Anton Ferdinand, obviously, Mr. West Ham. Um, He said he's coming in wearing all black today for our show, The Take On, which we're going to be doing later on. It's going to be out on the Five Channel. Was he at the game? Yeah, yeah, he he? took me. He took me and it was like all fancy. Did you turn around at half time and be like, Anton? Anton? Listen, I did that after like the first 35 (laughs) minutes, mate. Like, seriously. Him and like the other West Ham legends or whatever, they're all there suited and booted. Mm. And I went up to him and I was like, Did you did you dress up for this L? Did you? <laughs> like he looks proper sharp and it was just yeah, bad, it wasn't man. a good day, was it? That's bad. I was a little bit disappointed in Arsenal to be honest, because once you got that sixth I'm like, I want a cricket scoreline, just as a neutral. Do you think you know we what just because we got it pretty early on, innit? We still had like 20 minutes. We had about play. 20 minutes, yeah. man. Like, you know, I you, think the you, rest... get it, you get it, didn't you? Like, you get to six, and a lot of teams just like, oh, come on, let's let's take a bit of pity on them now. Yeah, I would have just mm. me as an individual, I would have been screaming, kill him. This is mm. Sunday League, Joel. By the way, mm. like, you you got to go for it, man. Because you know what's crazy when you're playing teams like City and Liverpool. When you're challenging, you don't know if goal difference is really going to come into it. So you got to give yourself the the best chance possible. Yeah, this year more than ever, you're looking at that and you're thinking that's a that's a distinct possibility, really. Mm-hmm. Um, you weren't the only side to win a London derby this week. Chelsea rocking up at Selhurst Park. Heard it, was a, it was a bit sketchy though, wasn't it? Mate, the first half. <laughs> I'm sorry to the Chelsea fans because we are all buzzing off of it. And I think with the way the land lies at the minute, the way our fortunes of our club have gone, you've got to take the wins where they come. But first half was probably the worst half of football I've seen Chelsea play this season. Wow. First half was bad. Give give us your points as to why you think it was bad. Mate, we had 80% possession, yeah, without a shot on target. Now, I don't know who works in the statistic rooms, right, for these Premier League League coverage and uh, the broadcasters, but... It was a stat pulled up. Um, 20 years of the Premier League we've had now. Is it 20 years? Is it more? 30 years? Uh, I'll probably say just more than 20 years. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But anyway, whatever it is, um, in that whole space of time, never has a side recorded more successful passes mm. without a shot on target oh, wow. in, a, in, in a 45 minute half of football. So. It, was, it was like keep ball. It was just uh, possession. W- it was, but it was just like, when I was watching it at first, I was like, look, these boys are there for the taking, man. We, like, no Eze, no Elise, uh, Mark Gahey out. Like, they were there for the taking. First 10 minutes or so, we're, we're keeping a lot of possession. And we very much let them grow into the game. Like, I don't think Palace would have given us any sort of problems had it not been for our lack of of clinicalness, of creativity. So first half, really bad. Um, obviously, that they go in at halftime, 1-0 up. Then second half, started with the bit between our teeth a little bit more, a little bit more creativity down on that side um, between Cole Palmer and Melo Gusto. Melo Gusto, by the way, like he's easing so many of our worries we had around the Reese James thing. And you notice mm. now, like you'd hear me before Melo Gusto came to emergence, you'd hear me banging on about Reese James. We're a different team without mm-hmm, him. Mm-hmm. I'm sure Reese James are coming and level up this team ever so slightly, but my God, he's a good deputy, Melo Gusto. He, and and almost well. disrespectful to call him that. Well, he's young as well. That's the thing. Yeah, 19, 20 years old or something. Uh, I think two assists in his last two games. Like, you're looking now at his delivery. He's whipping balls in the box nicely. He's getting a lot more creative. He's good defensively. I can't really fault Malo Gusto at the moment. So My only issue is with your players is you seem to go through patches. Mm. You know, like, I mean, besides maybe a Cole Palmer and stuff like that, like, I would like to... It's hard, obviously, because you're you're not doing your your temp 34 points. Like, it's... Is obviously an up and down season. Yeah, top half, um, top half. Yeah, top, yeah, top yeah. half, just about. Yeah. Uh, it, it, would you like to see more consistency from some of the other players? And if so, who? 
mate, I'd like to see more consistency from all of them, really. Like, the mm. only the only players that I can really vouch for having that sort of consistency week in, week out are Petrovic, goalkeeper. Yeah, very, very good. consistent. Uh, Melo Gusto, I'm, um, for the most part, seeing consistent performances. A young player, you're always going to suffer gonna a little bit with maybe yeah. poor judgment, ill discipline, things like that. Melo mm. Gusto's had a sending off this season. For my money, he should have had two sendings off so far this season. Um, Cole Palmer. The numbers will tell you he's consistent. Mm -hmm. And my God, when he's good, he's good. Actually, against Crystal Palace, two assists, quite a match. Quite a match. But because of the quality of him, because of the skill of Cole Palmer, when he does have a quite a match, it's not so much like he, he's bad or anything. He just yeah. maybe hasn't been there in the, in the key moments. Because he's a star. Yeah. He's, he is, he's, a, he's an actual star. He's got the team on his back more is, often than not. Would you say, would you, is it fair to say that's his team now? The stats will tell you it is. Yeah. Stats here, isn't I got got some stats here for you. Um, yeah. Obviously, Cole Palmer. Listen, he, he he's hit the ground running. It's sort of breakout season, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So far this season, 23-24, 21 appearances. This is just the league, by the way, because he's banged a few in the cups. But 21 appearances, yeah. 10 goals, six assists. Pretty. How many, how many of them are pens, by the way? Just just before you start. Uh, it doesn't say, mate. See, just says 10 I can goals. See where you go with Yeah, this. just says. 10 how many goals. pens? Just says 10 goals. Can you find out, Archie? Um, Archie, can you please find out? Let's not let's not get bogged yeah, down on the numbers. Cool. Ten, 10 goals, six assists. I mean, you got, got, um, has he got a thank you note for Raheem Sterling in there as well for letting him take the pens him. as well? So, Palm, uh, Palmer's obviously playing on the right wing. I'm just trying to think of a right winger off the top of my head. We could compare him to. I know where this is going. Uh, let's go. Let's say Bakayo Saka. Oh, for example. Oh. Um, let's not go this season. Let's let's go. <laughs> 2018 19. Well, breakout seasons. Breakout season, yeah. But but obviously, you know, he played left wing back a little bit in that first season. He, so, he... so let's give Saka three seasons. Let's go Let's go half a season for Cole Palmer, three whole seasons for Saka. Let's go from 2018-19 to 2020, 2021. In that time, Saka made 59 appearances, so just under three times as many as Cole Palmer. Um, six goals and eight assists. That's not so, bad for a left wing back. Well, I actually, I, th I thought you might say that. So, yeah. look, left wing back, probably only about 25% of the time he starts with a... Maybe more. Yeah, yeah, about twenty five. Yeah. About twenty five. So, mm -hmm. listen, I'm not, I'm not comparing the two. I'm just saying by that, you know, by yeah, those stats. At all. Listen, I really, really rate Bakayo Saka. Yeah, I think he's our best option, including Cole Palmer at the moment on the right wing for England. But I tell you what, if Cole Palmer's putting up them sort of stats in his breakout season, I'm very interested to see how the little battle for that right wing spot progresses over the next couple of seasons between them two boys because Cole Palmer's doing it right now. Five of his ten. Okay. Still got a score. So hang, hang on a minute. Was was that stat, please, Archie? Five. Five of ten. Five of ten are penalties. Wow. Has he got a thank you note for Raheem Sterling? We we'll talk about Sterling because that's one man I could I could do a scene a lot more consistently. Yeah, he, he, he started well. I think probably since the last England call up. Do you think we get any money for him? How old is he? 20 years. 20 he's younger than what you think, you know. You yeah. see Raheem, like, you would think he's like 32, 33 because he's been around so long. You'll get some sort of money for him. Do you, yeah. reckon, he, do you <laughs> reckon, yeah, he strikes me for someone who's going to stay in London, right? Do you reckon, like, we get, like, a 10 mil? I'm, I'm looking at Archie. I'm not even looking at the camera because Archie, the producer, is also an Arsenal fan. Mm. Do, do you reckon... I reckon he goes Arsenal somehow, you know. Mate, and you, we should get like, learnt, you should have learned your lesson like, from buying players like from us, man. 15 million, Raheem Sterling. Well, if we're going on the numbers, on the stats, if you're paying what, it's just, if the going rate's what, like 60 mil, what you paid for Kai Havertz, then you better put down about 80 mil. Oi, oi, oi. Show some respect to King Kai, yeah? He's having a brilliant season, he is. Is he? It's, he's doing really well. He really is. Like, let, let, let's be honest. I wasn't his biggest fan when, when yeah. we bought him. And I, I still do think that the money could have maybe been used in other areas. Mm -hmm. Probably more attacking, more than him. But I have to say, man, he's ridden the, the wave of criticism. He's shown strength. He holds the ball well. Mm. He brings in the team. He's got a, 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 a willing attitude. He scored goals, key goals. He's had assists, always providing issues for defenders. Mm. If you take away the name Kai Havertz and it was another player that was bought that for that amount, we wouldn't be here saying he's a failure. Mm. We'll be saying, yeah, he's had a good season. Yeah. 
So when you put back the, the name Kai Havertz on the back of the shirt, including the stats and etc., you can only you can only credit him. No, I, I actually can... I, I actually think I'm uh, relatively impressed by him at Arsenal. Yeah. I think if I took away the fee and you said to me, how's he settling into life at Arsenal? I'd say, yeah, sweet. Really well, right? He's doing all right, yeah. I mean, I think um, we've got to discount maybe... Look, if, if you bring someone in for 65 million, it's it's of my opinion, regardless of how transfer fees are going, it's of my opinion that they should sort of be the main man. Um, Kai Havertz, for me, isn't a definitive first-team starter for you. So, really? No, not really. Well, well, I think if you've got, your, stats I think if you got your strongest side out... I think there's... I'm not saying Kai Havertz doesn't make it in. I think there's a question. So it's, let's say, for example... Okay, I was going to say. If you, go, if you go party, Odegaard, Rice, he doesn't but, make but, it in. But you eight. can't say party because party's hardly featured. And we don't even know if he's going to be at our club anymore. Mm. All season, last time we saw him, when party was playing, he was playing right back. I tell you, 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 before a ball was kicked, I think you had signed... Well, you had signed Kai Havertz at this point. Me and you were having a conversation about this. And I said to you, you do realise, like, Havertz ain't going to be the guy that bangs you goals. Like, he, he, well, he's, no, he's not only, he's necessarily... He's only had five goals this season. You know, yeah, like I mean, he's not necessarily going to put up more numbers than Jesus. I say 24, actually. He's actually had more appearances what has he, than that. What has he had? Read out his stats. He's, um, in the Premier League, it's 23 matches, four goals, one assist. Yeah. Six what, yellow um, cards. How many pens? One or two? Oh, we don't know about it. We'll ask Archie in a second. Archie? One. Uh, Just the one, isn't it? Against one. Bournemouth, isn't it? Thank yeah. you. Um... 2023, 2024, Champions League, six matches, one goal. Uh, uh, and obviously, you forget about the FA Cup. It's not important. Yeah. No appearances, no goals. Um, yeah. Numbers are all right. So how many goals in total? Six. Six. Assists? One. One. Okay. It's not too bad. It's, do you know what it is? It's, it's all about the eye test when it comes with him. Mm. It's the problems that he causes before it bounces down and he lays it off. Mm. And I'm not just saying that to defend him. More times than none, if you look at him against Liverpool, absolute problems, man. You know, and don't forget he was he was practically the lone striker there. So it's like he was giving Canate and, you know, yep. Virgil a lot of trouble. You you're not gonna see that in the stats. I but think when you look at a player Kai Havertz's build as well, you'd normally associate him with being a little bit more of, not I don't want to say the word lightweight, but do you know what I mean? Like, whereas actually, Kai Havertz is a bully. He's a bit yeah. of a handful. And I'll tell you one thing, he riles up defenders. Yeah. And sometimes in those bigger games, lapses in concentration, things like that, letting emotion rule. I think that Kai Havertz is, a, is a, an important player. So listen, I'm not going to say anything too bad about Kai Havertz. I think... No. Um, uh, if you ask me, and I have to really, really put my neck on the line, is he worth 65 million? I would say no. But, but at he's, the same he's time... Play, he's playing like he's worth the money we've paid for him. Mm. No, not 65 million, nah. 65 million? What did, have you seen what you've played, paid for your players? Yeah. <laughs> if you were the player that you bought for 65 million that was played in your team... Like Kai Havertz right about now, you'll consider him a success like you do Cole Palmer. That you well, Cole 40 Palmer million. was 45 million. No, 40 million. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. And that's the success. When you're looking at a lot of your players, how much did you pay for Raheem Sterling? Uh, 45 million. Yeah. Yeah. You've just said you'd have him for 10. <laughs> no, we probably. I said we'll probably end up getting him for 10, 15 after he's done right, it. I'll tell Chelsea. you what, I'm not sure about the way things are going with Raheem Sterling at the moment. Really? Um, Why don't you guys like him? Do you know what? I always get this asked to me. It's not at all that I don't like him. Like, listen, we talk about pulling up receipts. You can pull up my receipts from this season. I can tell... You've got to be very you, careful when it comes can, to receipts. Because no, no, there's no, a few no. people that have got a few of yours, you know. And they're not looking really good right now, Mr. Joey Knight. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, that's one of the that's one of the downfalls of the job, mate. You say enough, you throw enough at the wall, eventually say it a stick. You say enough on camera, eventually say it come back to bite you in the ass. But if you look at my team selection so far this season, I'd say eighty percent of the games I've been putting Raheem Sterling in there. I think Raheem Sterling, I think Raheem Sterling's a good player, but I don't know. Like when I look at Chelsea's sort of better performances this season, I can only really look at one where I'm like, yeah, Sterling was the man in that game, and that was probably the Man City game. More often than not. I'm looking at our other options and I'm sort of thinking, you know, Madawaki's blowing hot and cold. When he does blow hot, I'm very impressed by him. Cole Palmer, you're obviously going to have there instead. And at the moment, me and you, me and you, this, this man's this... so intriguing that we've gone a whole episode on him before. But Nicholas Jackson, I'm quite liking him on the wing, you know, when he's playing. Oh, we at... said this before, though. We, I, I definitely said he strikes yeah. me as a, a winger more than a forward. Yeah. Because yeah. he's, he's a problem. 
And he's a clever player, Nicholas Jackson. Like, don't let the highlight reel misses fool you. Like, he's actually a clever player. He's done a back heel. Yeah, let's, night. let's just ignore the highlight reels where he, he misses. He lovely. But there is one man mm. who I am very concerned about at this moment in time. Oh, okay. Mikhailo Mudrik. Can we, before we go there, mm. guys, just keep on watching, by the way. The engagement's got to go up. Throw them likes, them comments in there. Let us know what you think of this show. But so this tells me Joe's about to rip me over something. Yeah, 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 please. Your thoughts on Enzo. Mm. I mean, we've got you on record as recent as last week saying he can go. He should probably go. He can go. And I looked at you and I thought, Mr. Joey Knight, are you sure about that? I've always been a fan. Mm-hmm. And I think he's one of those players. He is a little bit of a luxury player at times. But my, oh my, what a player. I mean, what he did for his goal against Palace and the game before that as well when he banged in the free kick. Me and you were texting, remember? Mm. Yeah, I <laughs> should probably well. clarify my comments on that. Go on. So, Can you clarify to the people yeah. your thoughts on Enzo? Yeah. yeah, I am in a calorie deficit and I've been doing a lot of heavy sparring. Okay, a lot of blows to the head. Um <laughs> No, let's let's say it for what it is, right? Remember, remember what I actually said. I said because I remember this, right? I've I've had to keep track of my own receipts. I said <laughs> that if the reports that Enzo Fernandez wanted to leave the club were true, I'd let him go. And 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 what I'm saying is, you cannot direct a ship in the right way if everyone's not rowing in the same direction. Now, if Enzo Fernandez was at a point where he had said, you know what? I've had enough of London. I want to move on. I don't want to be at Chelsea. I want to go to Barcelona. If, and that's a big if, if that possibility was true, I stand by it now. But that's the same with every player besides Cole Palmer and Rhys James. Mate. So I don't think that's fair. If Rhys James didn't want to be at Chelsea... I don't think I don't think it's out of the question. I to see say what you've I, just I, done there because you you're just making a point about nothing because anyone would say that you specifically for he's not good enough to play for Chelsea he needs to go. No 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 I said if he doesn't want to Joey. be here I would show him the door. Joey he's, Joey he's, he's been he's had a YouTube channel for like a year just over a year and he's now someone, gone political all someone, of a sudden. Someone pull up the receipts. Oh I, my I, gosh! I, I remember I remember I said that if the reports were true then he could go. Um, and listen, mate, I still stand by it. Like, if any player doesn't want to be at Chelsea Football Club, I'm happy you, for them to go. You just spun it there. Guys, we, we said we're giving away a prize if you can let us know what, what episode this is. But if you can find the receipt for find it. Joey Receipt Night, you will also find get it. a gift from us. Guys, we're getting them comments going. Because but listen, listen, wild. right? The world has a funny way of working. And part of me probably did think in doing so that, you know, Enzo is probably a big watcher of the channel. It's going to spur him on. It's going to get the best out of him sometimes you need to give people a bit of tough love give them a little bit of criticism and it'll get the best out of them i'll tell you what mate that that day i said that i was like oh should i have said like, did, did you really it, look I, back at it and regret yeah of course i did yeah really? because I, I, I do really like enzo fernandez but you got to remember right it's joel man it's very easy for you like you've had whether you missed out on the title or not you've had a cushy couple of seasons man like you've been cool you've been able to watch your team run riot at the likes of west ham and other teams winning five what well, you've had a you've had wins six, by six, five, six, no. five yeah that's what i'm saying though you've had wins by five goal margins twice this season or something like that like when was the last right. time chelsea won by five well borough i was at the game actually i had yeah, a few beers that one. night yeah. um but what i'm saying is <clears throat> Big game as well. That's it's very much easy. Yeah. <laughs> it's very much easy when, you know, things are going well for the most part. There's little dips, little little hiccups in a the row there and here and now. But when things are going very well in the most part, it's easy. But I'll tell you one thing. When your team are playing the way that mine have been over the last few seasons, that ain't a thing of like, oh, disappointed, turn the match off, fine, stop thinking about it. I'm lying in bed, mate. My missus is talking to me and I'm like, mm. Yeah, you know, like I'm, I'm, I'm deflated, and I was coming in to record that episode off the back of some bad, bad performances. Man, Wolves battered us. Enzo was non-existent in that game. Then the reports come out that players want to leave, and I'm thinking, do you know what? After these last two performances against Liverpool and Wolves, if you want to leave, be my guest, mate, because you boys ain't pulling your socks up. Since then. <laughs> I've had a bit of time to reflect. Enzo has been pulling his socks up and I'm very, very happy with his contribution. So, but listen. Ah, what a 
politician. Go on, mate. One man whose contribution I'm really, really starting to doubt is the man behind us, Mikhailo Mudrik. So I want to ask you off the back, before we really delve in to what is going on with Mikhailo Mudrik, are you glad that we pipped you to it with that Mudrik signing or would you have liked to have had him? 100% because people forget, you know, Arsenal fans, there's a lot of complaints about the £65 million spent on Kai Havertz. Mm. Mate, if we had bought him for the price that they were asking for what you paid, we wouldn't have had Trossard and we wouldn't have had Kai Havertz. Mad. Do you see what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So, do you not think you'd have, um, Arteta would have got a better tune out of him? Do you not think maybe, that maybe prob probably so because of, chaotic probably so because of um, you know the like, like you're saying the environment, the team spirit. But I heard Harry Redknapp said a little story about when he spoke to Frank Lampard or something like that, and they said and he said yeah he's really really good. He just needs to learn the game. Mm. And then Harry Redknapp said for like 90, 90 million mate. You already need to. What do you mean? You need to learn the game. You already need to know the game. Mm. And he was baffled. He was shocked that that was a comment, you know. And so am I. You know, are we paying that much money in football these days for potential? Mm. People ripped us for Pepe, you know. When you go and see what United have done with Anthony, what you guys have done with this guy, you know, it is shocking. You know, Pepe's stats shocking. weren't that bad, you know. Yeah, yeah. When you look at Pepe, well, honestly, I always say I would have kept him at Arsenal. Mm. I understand they probably had to move him because if there's an offer and he's still worth a little something, it's better to get something than nothing. But I would have honestly kept him because Saka plays too many games for me, you know, and uh, he would have been, I think Pepe would have been a good player as an understudy trying, like, he, they play different. Mm. So it would have been a different option. Back to Mudrit. What's this about? He's, te he's uploading stories. <sighs> Mate, he's, Whilst on, he's on the he's, bench. He's on the bench uploading stories, and the story wasn't even anything massively negative. Um, there was a, a sank happened basically. Michael Oliver um, has somehow managed to break his microphone, the VAR microphone that the refs wear. Um, he's managed to break it. It delays the start of the second half by about 10 minutes. The crowd are getting restless, man. Like, it's a weeknight, you know, trains are running, people want to get home and whatnot. Second half hasn't started. Um, and whoever's in control of the stereo system at Crystal Palace has pulled a bit of a masterclass. They put on three little birds, Bob Marley, right? I know who I know who does that by the way. Oh really? Yeah, it's one of my boys. Yeah, he smashed it. Yeah. Well, it, well, it's become a new Chelsea thing now. Now yeah, we're really. all chanting it. Um, but then Mikhailo Mudrik during the second half is is posting on his Instagram now, albeit it's light hearted. Yeah, like he's he's posting a story with the three little birds thing. Not the crowd singing it. He's just a it's a picture of Poch talking to him mm -hmm. on the touchline about to bring him on as a sub. Bearing in mind he hasn't come off the bench as a sub in the last two matches. He's been unused. Wow. Um, my opinion of it is. I don't really think that you should be posting on Instagram when you're sat on a bench. Because let's remember, you might be on the bench. Phone. Yeah, you're at work. I'm you're at work, mate. Phone. You're at work. But not only that, he's got history. He's got form for bad, you know, conducting himself in a bad way on his phone. There was the thing about the guy going to him. Now, listen, the guy, the guy was an idiot. You just, I don't know why you'd inbox a player, something like that. But he had inboxed him saying, what the hell is going on with you? Mudrick's gone back to him. Oh, you any good at football? Come take me on in a 1v1. Like, that proves anything. Now, there, again, is naivety. I very much look at that and I'm like, mate, what are you doing, man? Like, what are you doing? Um, you can you can cite his age. I get that. But Bakayo Saka, you know, you look, at, you look at his age when he broke on the scene. I didn't see him doing anything like that especially with the amount of stick that Bukayo Saka came on under, you know, after the Euro final, we all know, you know, what happened there. And we didn't really see the player lash him back. We, we obviously know that it's a massively sensitive subject in terms of the country he's come from. And I'm very, very aware of that. And I respect that. But at the same time, just look at your boys. You've got Zinchenko in defence. He's performing to a very high standard. Um, a lot of players, you know, like I get that there's a war going on in that country and I do understand that, sympathise with that. A lot of players come from countries and backgrounds where it's very, very difficult and they sort of adapt in well. Now, when I take all the way um, or when I take away his conduct of what I'm sort of thinking, look, it's not that I'm scathing of his conduct and I'm thinking, what are you doing? I'm really angry about it. But the word I would use is cringe. It's a bit cringy. It's a bit cringy. It makes me cringe at times, the things that he's doing. Then when I look at his actual performances, right, he hasn't been in a first team starting 11 for five matches now. He's been an unused sub in the last two matches now. 80 of million pounds, whatever it was he came in for. I'm sort of looking at things and I'm thinking, do you know what? 
I don't really have much confidence that this boy is ever going to do it for us and he's ever going to turn it on for us. So then I'm looking at things and I'm thinking, that's a, that's a real hole we've got ourselves in here. Bayern Munich, now we didn't find out until after the uh, transfer window was closed. Bayern Munich came in for him on a loan. Am I wrong to be of the opinion that we should have let him go on that loan? Probably, yeah. I think I think you should have because I think he gets to go somewhere, fresh environment. You know, they might not win Bundesliga, but at the same time, they're obviously challenging. You get to play with some really good players. You're winning most weeks. I think that's the kind of confidence he needs mm. because I think the price tag has absolutely messed him up. Mm. It really has. It's the confidence. I, I saw him um, during the Ukraine charity game. Mm. Really respectful guy. Um, took a picture of him. Like He came and spoke with Rio and um, Gerard Piquet. Um, and he knew he was around players that had done it before. Really respectful. But I have to say, he did look sad. Mm. Like, and I know he's a quiet kind of guy, well, most times when I see him, but you know, sometimes you can look at someone. I've had times like that when someone can look at me from afar. They go, oh, I've seen you in a shop and you didn't quite look yourself, you know, and um, he's not going to be happy at the moment, is he? No. Who's going to be happy when your, your things at work are bad? Mm. People always say, oh, keep what you keep at work separate from when you're at home, but he loves football. Yeah. When he goes home, and he look, turns his phone off and it's nothing but abuse, he's not going to be happy, is he? Mm. He should have went if he had the opportunity. Did Chelsea stop it? Or I think happened? Chelsea stopped it, to be fair. I think Mudrick would have been up for it. Um, and I completely understand that. Like, look, I am actually not doubting that Mikhailo Mudrick does go on to to be a very decent player. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say some people are running with the narrative he's gonna be an elite player and whatever. I will put my neck on the line and say he's not gonna be that. I don't think he's gonna be that. Not even after the first glimpses that you saw when he came on against Liverpool. Do you remember that game? Yeah I mean causing I've, problems. Oh, it was a forty five minute cameo mate. I know but I'm just saying sometimes the best could only need a few minutes to, to scout a player. I watched a goal the other day. This is going off topic a little bit. I watched a goal the other day right Ricardo Fuller. Remember Fuller? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's Do you remember that goal he scored where he turned into Bergkamp? <sighs> he, 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 the flick was unreal. He turns in to a prime Dennis Bergkamp. It's an isolated incident, mate, because Ricardo Fuller was not Dennis Bergkamp. And I'm looking now and I'm going, okay, that was impressive. My God, was I excited to see Mikhailo Mudrik after that cameo against Liverpool. I've now got a back catalogue to be able to look into and go, right, this is what you really do when I've seen you given the opportunity. He hasn't done anything so far. And I completely understand that that's probably down to the fact that maybe he doesn't like it in London. Maybe it's not working for him at Chelsea. And I understand that. And maybe he'll go on somewhere else and potentially one day it might be a Mo Salah, a Kevin De Bruyne story. Maybe. Maybe. But at the moment, I'm thinking, right, okay, for the here and now, I don't think Mudrick is going to do it at Chelsea Football Club. I really, really hope he proves me wrong. I really, really hope he proves me wrong. And believe me, when I'm in the stands, which I'm regularly in the stands at games, I'm showing nothing but support to Mikhailo Mudrick. However, I just think that sometimes the situation hasn't settled itself. I thought that a manager like Pochettino would be able to get an arm around him, and he hasn't been able to. We're not even seeing him anywhere near the starting lineup. I think that the loan option would have been really, really good for Mikhailo Mudrik because I, I think he could have gone out there, got his confidence, got some game time, hopefully came back and done it for Chelsea, um, and we had seen the feed we had invested in him repaid somewhat. And even if not... The value. Even if he, the value. He, he, yeah, he was never going to get up to 80 million. But I'll tell you no. what, if he went and had a great six months at Bayern Munich, I think someone might be looking at him for somewhere along the lines of 50 million. 50 million just going, yeah, he scored 15 goals. Yeah. Get him. Mm. There's something there. Yeah. And, know, then, and then you cut your losses. I know it's unfair to do this to you because you probably haven't been watching him with a magnifying glass like I have. But if you had to predict now. Does Mikhailo Mudrik, I'm not even going to say go on to make the grade. Does Mikhailo Mudrik go on to do what Chelsea fans initially would hope he would do at Chelsea Football Club? At Chelsea, I say no. Yeah. I just sometimes I feel like when people are not happy, mm. they're not happy. Um, and sometimes it just is what it is. You've seen it with Kevin De Bruyne. You've seen it mm. with Mo Salah. I'm not saying they, they necessarily wanted to leave, but 
you know, I just don't, sometimes I just don't think it happens. I mean, how long is his contract though? That's the thing. Eight years or something. How long has he got left now? What, seven and a half years? Seven. seven. My yeah, gosh. it's been a year. My gosh. Yeah. Seven years? Yeah. That's crazy. Like, but then but then at the same it, time, respect to Mikhailo Mudrik, I don't think, I don't see him being the sort of player that's going to want to sit it out and... Um, you know, I, I very much think that he'd probably take a pay cut to go elsewhere. Yeah, um, he's not on a lot as as it stands. No, nah, wages he? aren't wages aren't bad. Was it seventy, eighty, seventy? I say not a lot. It, it'd but be less than a hundred. Be less than a hundred. Okay. I think our highest earner now, especially the ones that Bodie gave contracts to, would be Enzo. And and if you look at our wages now, like if you put them up next to the Man United wages, they're they're astronomical compared to ours. We've lowered our wage bill massively. So yeah. I think Raheem Sterling's our top earner, three two yeah. five a week. But apart from that, most of the both I think signings. Reece James has got a good one, isn't it? Yeah, three hundred a week. I think yeah. He yeah. So it, most though. of the wages by football standards today are fairly shrewd with the signings. Um, I really don't know, man. Like I, I very much want to get it on the record here. I'm not trying to be scathing about Mikhailo Mudrik, but I just I'm bewildered as to what has happened and where it's where it's going with him. And unfortunately, I can't really see a light at the end of the tunnel. The issue the is the issue is you've paid. 85, 90 million pounds for a player who hadn't done it in senior football. Yeah. And because of that, the price tag is so heavy. Mm. The expectations are mad. If he was like any of your other players that you bought in and you'd only had him in for 15 million, no one would really care. Mm. You know, you, he would get the time. He would be in and out of the team, whatever. And he probably wouldn't feel the pressure and he would do what he's doing. But right about now, everything we've seen him with, with a microscopic glass, tweets, Instagram posts, stories. Mm. Yeah, he's not helping himself, but it wouldn't have been a, a big deal. Yeah. yeah. Very, very interested to know what you guys think. What does the future hold for Mikhailo Mudrik? Do you think he'll make a success at Chelsea or do you think that maybe we need to look at a loan? And I'll tell you one thing. If you had told me a year ago and we signed him and he came on and he did have that cameo against Liverpool that in a year's time I'll be saying, does he need a loan? That that really would uh, oh, blow my mind, to be honest. It's, it's a crazy one. But listen, I do hope all the best. I very much hope that Mikhailo Mudrik does turn things around. At the moment, the jury is very much still out. Joel, have we got anything else we need to... No, I just want to say, make sure you go back, you watch this video. Uh, we're obviously doing prizes and stuff now, so we want you guys engaging and commenting. What is the prize? And, uh, Oh, we'll decide. We'll decide during the course of the week. Let's yeah. let's WhatsApp each other. Yeah. But make it good for them though, because I really like the the viewers on this we channel. Get sank. Yeah. We get sank. Right, people. That was another episode of the Best of London. We will be back next week. So make sure you get in the comments and you suggest anything you want to hear from me and Joel. Anything you want us to talk about. Make sure you follow Joel. His socials are linked on screen. Instagram, especially. Instagram, especially. And TikTok, actually. We will see you all in the next one.